Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the FSW Spurious Emissions Measurements. In this presentation, we'll show how to configure, run, and interpret spurious emissions measurements using a Rodian Schwartz FSW Series Signal and Spectrum Analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of spurious emissions and how they're measured using a spectrum analyzer. If you're unfamiliar with this topic, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Spurious Emissions Measurements before beginning this presentation. Spurious Emissions Testing is one of the standard spectrum measurements on the FSW and is supported on all FSW series analyzers. This measurement facilitates the detection, identification, and measurement of spurious signals or spurs. The search range and parameters such as resolution, bandwidth, etc. can be defined per search range and limit lines can also be defined for each range. Results are displayed both graphically and numerically, and the measurement results can be saved and exported. Note that an additional measurement application, called Fast Spur Search, is also available for the FSW. This option contains more advanced features and offers higher performance, and is covered in a separate presentation. To make a basic spurious emissions measurement, Press the Measure Hard key and then select Spurious Emissions from the list of available emission measurements. This is a standard spectrum measurement and does not require any additional hardware, software, or license code. Here we see the main Spurious Emissions screen. Configuration settings are accessed via the buttons on the right. The default view shows both graphical results as well as numerical results beneath them. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to configure and interpret measurement parameters and result displays. Configuring spurious emissions measurements usually begins with splitting the total frequency range of interest into subranges. This set of subranges is referred to as a sweep list. Each subrange has its own user defined measurement parameters and its own limit lines. We'll talk more about these on the next few slides. Configuring these ranges, or sweep lists, is done by pressing the Sweep List button on the main screen. Let's look more closely at how ranges are configured. Ranges can be added or deleted using the buttons at the bottom of the screen. In addition to the Start and Stop frequencies, measurement parameters include the filter type, as well as the resolution and video bandwidths to be used. It's common for resolution bandwidth to be different for different ranges. The sweep time can be automatically calculated from the subspan and resolution slash video bandwidth, or it can be manually entered by the user. For most spurious emission measurements, the default RMS detector is used, but this is also user configurable. Settings for reference level, attenuation, and the preamplifier should also be adjusted as needed. And finally, the number of sweep points and the behavior at the end of each sweep can be adjusted. The number of sweep points is often set higher in ranges where higher resolution or detail is needed. Note that of all these parameters, resolution bandwidth is usually the most important, since it represents a trade-off between a lower noise floor and a longer sweep or overall measurement time. Scrolling down the sweep list shows the limit check parameters, which are also configured per range and often are specified differently for different ranges. These limits can be entered either as absolute or as relative values. As we'll see shortly, the limit line is displayed in red on the measurement screen. The overall result, pass or fail, is also indicated at the top of the screen, with fail being shown if the measured signal level exceeds this limit line at any point. And, as we'll also see, the limit line values are shown in the evaluation list, that is, in the numerical results. The largest deviations of the signal within each range are displayed, and the numerical values which exceed the limit will be indicated in red. Before we look at how results are shown, it's worth taking a moment to explain the Adjust X-Axis button which is available both within the Sweep Configuration dialog or from the main measurement window. Pressing this button automatically adjusts the frequency axis 
that is the start and stop frequencies, to match the configured sweep ranges. In other words, the start frequency will be the start frequency of the first range, and the stop frequency will be the stop frequency of the last range. In this example, pressing Adjust X Axis will cause the span to start at 6 GHz and stop at 8 GHz, which corresponds to a center frequency of 7 GHz and a span of 2 GHz. Now let's look at an example of a spurious emission measurement. The top of the default layout shows the measured signal trace. Note that the region with the lower noise floor is due to a smaller resolution bandwidth being used within this subrange. The limit line is displayed on the trace in red, and the overall pass or fail result is shown based on whether this line was violated at any point. At the bottom of the screen are the numeric results given per range. The columns in this table show the start and stop frequencies and resolution bandwidth for each range, as well as the frequency and absolute power, in dBm, of detected spurs. The final column shows how far each spur is from the configured limit line, with values that exceed the limit line being shown in red. The number of spurs shown in the numeric results is configured from the List Evaluation dialog. In this particular example, peaks per range is set to 5, so the table will show only the five largest spurs found in each range. Show Peaks places small orange squares on the top of each spur whose amplitude is within a certain number of dB from the limit line. That is, peaks whose margin is less than the configured value, here 5 dB. The numeric values are displayed in a table when List Evaluation State is turned on, and, as mentioned a moment ago, Spurs which exceed this limit line will have their numeric values displayed in red. The Save button is used to save the spurs list to an ASCII file. This file will include the numeric data for each spur, whether each spur violates the limit line, and the instrument settings used when making the measurements. Let's end with a brief summary. Spurious emission measurements are a standard measurement on Rodian Schwartz FSW series signal and spectrum analyzers. In most cases, the input spectrum is divided into user defined subranges, each of which has user configurable measurement parameters such as resolution and video bandwidth, etc. Each of these also can have limit lines which indicate when a spurious emission, or spur, exceeds a defined threshold. Measurement results are displayed both graphically and in numeric or table format, and these measurement results can be easily exported to an ASCII file for documentation or additional analysis. And finally, although the standard spurious emissions measurement function is sufficient for many applications, the FSW also supports more advanced spurious emission measurements in the FSW K50 Fast Spur Search application. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the FSW, Spurious Emission Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about spurious emissions measurements, other spectrum measurements, or spectrum analyzers from Rodian and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.